Start with the word prayer, okay? Okay, well, dearest Lord, creator of all of this and so much more, I pray that you pour yourself in, fill us up, and Lord, just be with me as I speak, because this is one of those times when I'm really interested in what I'm going to say. So I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's not that I don't actually write things out and think about it. I do. But it's just so aware, I'm so aware of the fact tonight that I have so much to share. And I'm going to depend on the Lord getting it summarized because I could just go on. I was tempted. I thought, oh, I'm 70 this year. Maybe I'll just recap my life. And I thought, no, no, no. That was <laughs> so we, it's only 15 minutes, say so. So actually, I thought maybe I, what I would do is share some of the things I've learned this year since I talked with you last, and then some of my failures, because I think, I think that uh, Faith hit it absolutely right. Um, our failures are maybe God's biggest gift to us. And uh, one of the things that I've learned this year is that I have had it upside down and backwards. I have had, for years, the educational model. You know, you take a course, you get a, you get a grade, and uh, you move on to the next course, next grade. You get a, you know, you get a master, well, bachelor's, master's, whatever, and it's all about learning. And, and then, as I am teaching people in their 90s at Arcadia to use the computer, I have realized that is not the way God has designed us to learn. God is designed just to learn, and, and it's real simple. If you watch kids, they, they are always falling down and getting up, and falling down and getting up. And they learn by falling down and by making mistakes. And once you begin to understand that we have had the wrong model, and that the real model of how we're all designed to learn is by messing up. I will say it again. We're designed to learn by messing up. And and then hopefully learning from our messing up and, you know, cleaning up, making amends. I love the 12-step program. Everybody should be working on making amends, you know. I, um, so one of the gals I was talking about this with, she said, I was talking about the educational system, and she said, oh, yeah, she said, you know, you make a mistake and the black cloud of shame comes and sits over your head. And uh, so the other day I saw her and she was playing away at the computer. I said, what? What? No black cloud of shame? She says, there's nobody watching. <laughs> so <laughs> safe to make mistakes when nobody's watching. If, if you finally have gotten the idea that we're heuristic learners, trial and error. So that was like a big, da, Margie, da. And uh, so now let me share one of my failures that I'm learning from. And my mother's... Um, my mother had a cat. Okay, was it, this was a male cat. It was an alpha male cat. Now, it worked out really well because my mother and I both lived with, had lived, lived with alpha males. So, you know, this demanding, obnoxious cat was, you know, we felt very comfortable with it. Cat would sit on the table when we played Scrabble and, you know, just make his presence known, sleep with her, sit with her when she did her crossword puzzle. There was just this one little flaw with the cat, and that is that every so often he would attack her you know, have to be pulled off of her arm. And um, so, you know, after my mother spent 36 hours in, in the Queen's Hospital from a cat-infected bite, we really thought we had to get rid of the cat. So my mother agreed. I mean, she's 94 and a half, but she's a sound mind. So, I, you know, of course, Pulita Hua says, anybody who will let your cat bite you is not a sound mind. But as, as my mother and I go, we, we, she was a sound mind. So the cat went to the vet. My mother collapsed, and um, we got the cat back. So just before I go off to Africa, there's the cat is back. And I'm in Hong Kong, and I'm reading from my little Blackberry, and it's my mother sending me an email saying, the cat attacked her at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm going, oh my gosh. So anyway, so now I get back. My mother is still devastated. Her heart is shattered into a million pieces which have lodged in her heart and caused her not to want to eat anyway. And I, foolish me, have spent 
most of my time trying to cheer up my mother. Mom, you know, and I'll say bright and cheery and chipper things. And of course, she responds by getting more depressed. So I was complaining, I came home the other day and I, I told my husband, I'm just pissed, excuse me. But I, you know, that was, I was at that point. So, and I, my husband was not a lot of help, but my oldest daughter, whose purpose in life is to perfect me, and my husband, said, Mother, you have not been telling her how you feel. And I thought, oh, tell her how I feel. My therapist, Mavis, spends a lot of time asking me, have you told, Sandy, have you told her how you feel? And it's always like, uh, oh, well, uh, how do I feel? You know, so, anyway, so, okay. So I think, okay, I've got to go to the retreat. I've got all these things to do. But I called up my mother. I said, Mom, I'm so sad about Cat. I miss Cat too. And I, you know, I, I, I went into it in detail about how sad I felt. And the more I was sad, the cheerier my mother got. <laughs> you know, they do this to you. I don't know. I mean, I, I think my mother is still alive because there's still so much I have to learn in life. <laughs> and, and, and Susie's very charitable. Susie's very charitable. She says, Mom, you're an intuitive. And the other end of your pole is sensate. So she says, feeling is just not on there at all. So don't feel bad about it. You know, you're, just, you're just, you know, you don't have it, Mom. But I'm working at it. A lot of failures, but thank goodness I have a daughter yeah, and a therapist. It's hard to tell which one. <laughs> anyway, so that was a, a notable failure, which... With a lot of help, I'm, you know, redeeming. So let's see now. The other thing I wanted to, okay, I got a few more minutes. The other thing is that at the start of, at the end of last year, I became aware of the fact that I had fears. Now, okay, okay, everybody's got fears, right? I come from a long line of Vikings. Now, now I'm not quite as bad as Faith, who's pure Norwegian, but there's a lot of really Viking type in my genetic pool. And one of the 